In this video, we're going to look at a couple more examples of elastic collisions and explosions, um, so some kind of interesting special cases, um, as we've done already, uh, specifically in one and two dimensions. Uh, we didn't do anything with two dimensions the, in the initial kind of round, but I do want to take a look at some of those examples. Um, if you look at an example, two one kilogram masses collide elastically. Um, M1 stops, then M2 starts. What happens during the collision? How does it actually happen? Right, We know about the before and after. Um, but the reality is it depends on kind of how the what forces are interacting. If you imagine there's two springs between them, which is a way of sort of simulating perfectly elastic because springs are conservative forces. You imagine at some time before they hit, right, the spring is uncompressed. Um, and as you're doing this, right, we have a momentum of two newton seconds or and a kinetic energy of two joules, right? Um, spring potential energy is zero. Then when they touch, right, we still have that same scenario just as they come together before the spring is compressed. Then once the spring is compressed, there's some point at which the total momentum is still two newton seconds, but they're both moving together because the spring is fully compressed, right? They, you can't um, have anything else, but we have a smaller amount of kinetic energy. Um, and then we have some spring potential energy, right? Some of the energy is in the spring. And then after they push off of each other, right? The momentum is again, what it was before. The kinetic energy is what it was before. And the spring potential energy is back to zero. And this continues as it goes. So that's what's actually happening during the collision before, during and after. Some of the energy goes into spring potential for a little bit, and then it goes back. So graphically, it looks something like this. The kinetic energy of the system dips and goes back up. The potential energy goes up. So the mechanical energy is conserved throughout, and the kinetic energy is the same at the end. Um, and so I said that the kinetic energy um, was dropped down to one joule. And the question is, how do I know? Well, K is proportional to V squared. So the minimum occurs when the masses have the same speed, because that's when they're going the slowest. Um, and, and so that's really what we're looking at there. Um, and we can plug in those values. Um, we find out how fast they're going by doing basically a conservation of momentum problem where they stick together briefly um, and you end up with one joule, right? So what about an elastic explosion? This is the same idea. Imagine if you compress a spring between two masses and then just, they're both at rest and you let them go, right? Um, this is a problem we could actually have solved at least a little bit uh, or thought about before because we know that the spring will apply forces equal and opposite for each of these, right? That's just how forces work. They are always in third law pairs. The spring pushes on one and pushes on the other equal and opposite. Well, in terms of mechanical energy conservation, we can say, well, we start with one half kx squared and we end up with the sum of their two kinetic energies. Momentum is also conserved. And so just like we did in our previous discussion about elastic collisions, we can kind of combine those together. Uh, we can plug back into one of our equations and we end up with an interesting result. That, And this is, again, not anything I would ever consider memorizing because you don't really need to know this, but know that you could get there. But there is a way to solve this for each of the objects. One of them will be going positive, one of them will be going negative, one of them will be going faster than the other. Notice the one with half the mass is going twice as fast, and so on. Um, so another example of a 1D inelastic collision, right? If these are the unknowns, right? The unknowns don't have to be the velocities. You can actually have other things be unknown. That's perfectly fine, right? There's nothing about uh, the work we've done that requires that. Um, after the collision, we have this information, right? Can we put all that together? Which unknown is the easiest to solve for? Well, if we kind of do the energy equation, that allows us to solve for the velocity pretty quickly, one of them, V2. Then we can do the momentum equation put everything together and solve, right? Um, you can go back and look at this example if you want um, in more detail. The other thing I wanted to look at is a two-dimensional elastic collision. Now, we know that if you've ever 
roll the ball into another ball, marbles, billiards, whatever, you know that things don't always hit and go off in straight lines. If you hit it off center, because they're not actually point particles in space, you can get this kind of result where they fly off in different directions. And so because of that, we need to look at something a little bit more uh, complicated. So in general, the X momentum is conserved and the Y momentum is conserved. That must be true. And the total kinetic energy must be conserved. So those are the pieces that we have that have to go together to give us our result. The math is very messy. So we're only going to solve a special case where they have the same mass, right? Um, that way mass cancels out. And if we look at the velocity vector equation, then we get something very simple, right? That. Um, we can then cancel out the one half and the m's in all of these, and we get another simple relationship. What's our conclusion? Well, that v1 has to be moving perpendicular to v2, and that's actually a really interesting result, um, and something that is useful for us thinking about 2D collisions. Um, you can do this if you've ever taken two coins and sort of hit one. Um, you can do this on your desk, take two coins that are the same, two pennies, two quarters, whatever you like. Pennies are easy because they're pretty light and hit it and you can watch the path. Um, if you take a little video of it while you're doing it, you can see this happen. So um, pretty quick, um, but just a reminder, collisions and explosions are only elastic if mechanical energy is conserved. When in doubt, don't assume.